Hello, I'm Claire and I run Bus and Bird Arts, a small community arts company. And we work with museums, galleries, schools and healthcare settings. And I'm here to talk to you about play. Now, as small businesses, we juggle a lot of things from cash flow to new services or new products. But very rarely do we take time out to reflect, step away and just allow ourselves to play. Now the benefits of play are enormous and we really encourage our children to do those sorts of things that we don't allow ourselves as adults. But actually, play is brilliant for allowing us to be creative, developing critical thinking, problem solving. It even releases endorphins and improves brain function. There's loads of different things you can do to develop your own play as an adult and also take a little bit of time for yourself. So. You can incorporate play into your daily life, play a game of football, run around the park, get a kite, make a dandelion chain, a daisy chain, or you can have a go at creating a clay character like one of these, or this charming young lady here. So we're challenging you to have a go at creating a portrait of yourself, a colleague, a friend, or a member of your family. You can be as cruel or as kind as you like. You can exaggerate and you can make it as simple and realistic as you like. It's up to you. Let's get started. So if you fancy taking us up on the challenge of having a play with clay, boosting your creativity and taking some time out for yourself to create a clay head like this, or a clay head like this, you will need the following. You will need a rolling pin, preferably wooden. You will need some non-textured old cloth, a tea towel will do. You will need a knife, not too sharp. You will need a knife with a serrated edge, picnic knife is perfect. You will need a selection of interesting objects from around the home that you don't mind getting a bit of clay on such as felt tip lids because they're textured, the top off of tomato puree, a fruit shoot, something from the DIY drawer, an old screw because it's got quite an interesting bit here and I found a star anise in the kitchen, no idea why that's there. You'll also need a lollipop stick, and finally, you'll need some clay. Now, not everybody has clay at home, and so instead you can use plasticine or Play-Doh, or you can even make up your own pretend clay with some plain flour, salt and water, and you get this very pliable dough-like mixture, which you can use, and then the bits that you don't use, you can keep in a Tupperware container and keep in the fridge for a while. So once you've got all those, we're ready to get started. Okay, so let's get started making the clay face. You will need to make sure your mat is nice and flat on the table. Just a reminder that you're using the cloth mat to stop it sticking to the surface of the wooden table or your tablecloth. You need to take your clay, plop it in the middle of your mat, get your rolling pin, and roll it out until it's about the thickness of your middle finger. If it's a bit thicker, that doesn't matter. If it's a bit thinner, then again, it doesn't really matter. It's just a bit harder to manipulate. Okay, so once you've done that, you're ready to create the oval shape, which is the basis of the clay selfie or portrait. So you can cheat and use an oval cookie cutter or you can use an oval template that you've cut out of a cereal packet place it on top of your clay and draw around it so I'll take that option so I'm going to cut away my excess clay and put it over here so you put your oval template in the middle and you're basically going to basically draw and cut around, two basically there, 
draw and cut around your oval shape and then you should be able to hold down your oval shape and peel away the clay if it doesn't happen in one clean cut it doesn't matter you can just cut off little bits and you should have an oval like that these bits of excess clay these are really useful for making eyebrows lips cheeks noses etc so in hot weather it's a good idea to keep them wrapped up in a little bit of plastic when you're not using them so i'll move that one out of the way as well so this one here i'm going to use to create a nose so i've got my shape i'm going to roll it with my hands like that so we're creating a coil or a sausage shape if i roll it on the mat i get a better shape really so i'll place it on there so if you're doing a selfie you probably will want to be kind to yourself if you're doing a colleague or a friend or a family member you might take a more humorous approach so you might exaggerate some of their features so i'm going to go with this here i'm just creating an imaginary character actually so i'm going to place that on there i'm going to cut away the excess clay that i don't want to use or i'll come back to you later keep it in there to stop it drying out and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take my picnic knife or a knife with a serrated edge and scrape the back of it and scrape where I'm going to put it on the oval and any bits of excess clay if you put in a little plastic cup with some water you'll create yourself a slip slips basically a mix of clay and water and it's like a glue it's very useful I'm just going to take some of this slip and I paint it on I'm just going to stick my finger in there and just paint a blob of slip on and then I'm going to position the nose so you can put the nose on straight or you might decide to give them a bit of character sort of flare the nose off to one side it's totally up to you and then just gently with the sort of action like that with your finger and thumb press it down so you're starting to shape the nose onto the oval and then when you're happy with that you'll need your lollipop stick and with that you are going to take the clay from the nose onto the oval and you sort of must scrape down and you're going to do that all the way around and then put it back down on your mat get some water on your fingers and you're going to smooth and smooth all around the edge until it's a pre-prepared one it's a nice smooth nose shape like that you can use a washing up sponge to help you do that if you want it does create a nice smooth surface so you might decide that you're happy with that nose shape you might decide that bob has got quite a big nose if that's who you're looking at and so for that you'll need some more clay because what i'm going to do is i'm going to create this bit of the nose here I'm sure there's a correct name for it but I don't know it so you'll get some clay you'll roll it up with that sort of action into a ball you'll chop it in half and you'll position that either side of the nose and again using the same action as you've done before with the lollipop stick get some slip beforehand scrape it beforehand so scrape slip and stick scrape slip and stick and you'll get the lollipop stick and you'll smooth that all the way around so that's your nose okay once you've attached your nose you've smoothed it out and you've added side pieces if you want you're then ready to add nostrils so if you put it back down on your mat and take something like the bottom of a paintbrush or a fork anything really and keep your hand on the nose and sort of poke into the nose twist the paintbrush or whatever around and add in small holes big nostril holes whatever so my little person's gonna have a small nostril okay 
you're also ready to add the lips now you can add the lips as a sausage shape so this because it's quite hot the clay starting to dry out so any clay that starts cracking just put in the corner of your mat and get a fresh piece so i'm going to go to get a fresh piece of clay i'm going to roll it out it's going to be a thinner sausage than the nose was so i'm going to pull it like that chop it in half roll it out probably easier if you roll it on your mat move the head to one side So you've got a thin little sausage like that and that's going to go in that area there so you, this is where your face starts to take character so i'm going to add i'm going to add a slightly downturned mouth so i've added just a single layer of sausage there to create that sort of face you can add another one at the bottom which starts to create more of a lip effect and starts to give you more scope for giving the clay face a bit of character so same as before you will need to just gently lift that off you'll need to scrape the bottom you need to get some slip that's a good idea to scrape where you're adding it as well on the face. A bit more slip and put the lips on. And then just take time to press that down. Use your lollipop stick to drag the clay from the lips onto the clay oval the face you can use a sponge to make that a neater join so if you do that all the way around and then this is where things like the textures from around the house come in handy so felt tip lids I discovered especially the fatter ones are really good if you take them and put them on the side and you roll them across and you get a sort of a really nice lip texture you know the little creases in lips that appear so that's the lips of course you could open the mouth up and put teeth in or a tongue hanging out there's all sorts of things you could do there so it's time to move on to the eyes Okay, so we're ready to add the eyes. So the eyes will go here and here. But before we work directly onto the oval, what we're going to do is to put it to one side. We're going to take some spare clay and we're going to have a go at different ways of creating eyes. So you can take the clay and you can press down with your finger or your thumb and create a bit of an indent into the clay itself and you can take another little bit of clay roll it into a ball like that add a bit of slip and press it down so you basically created a little bit of an indent and an eye in a socket and take a slightly skinnier felt tip lid and poke it down and you've created that sort of an eye shape and it might be that you want to take a little bit of clay roll it into a really tiny little sausage shape and add it around so you start to, to create like a little eyelid effect okay that's one way of doing it another way of doing it is to take your clay so this bit represents where your eye will go on the oval face and take a little bit of clay roll it into a ball I'm going to chop it in half because it's just easier to handle I'm going to add some slip onto the bottom I don't really need to score it that is to scratch it with the picnic knife because it's such a small piece of clay so I'm going to put it directly onto the clay surface there and I'm going to take 
pencil, that's quite handy, and poke that right down into the surface of the clay to create that sort of effect. Then I'm going to take the fruit shoot lid and I'm going to roll that around to create a sort of an eye lid shape like that. And if you want to add a little bit more detail, you can add that. So what we're doing here is we're having a play with different eye techniques that you can do before you decide on your favourite one and add it onto your face. So I think I've chosen which one I'm going to do. So fresh clay because it's hot and the clay is drying out really quickly. So a little bit of fresh clay. I'm going to go for a little bit of an indent. I'm going to use my knuckle I think it'd be easier. There and there. Looks a little bit basic at the moment but we're going to build it up. A little bit of clay roll it into a ball and chop that in half and add some slip to the bottom. I'm going to put that to the board to the bottom of the indent in there, slightly sticky out eye. Gives it a bit more character. Slightly sticky out effect there. So it looks like that at the moment. Then I'm going to take my pencil, I'm going to poke, I'm going to hold the clay so it doesn't rise up again, poke that right down, twizzle the pencil, and do the same on the other one, poke that right down, turn in the pencil. I'm going to take the smaller felt tip lid, wherever it's gone, press on there. Just gives it a little bit more texture, a bit more interest. So it looks like that. I'm going to take, I think I'm going to take the star and ease. Let's just test that on the clay. Quite like the way that creates sort of surprised bit above the eyebrow. So I think I'm going to take a little bit of the clay, like I was talking about before, pull it apart, bit of slip. So just the same technique as you did for the lips, sort of smaller, thinner piece. I'm going to put it above like that. And then I'm going to press the star and ease into that. And add a few more lines for an eyebrow effect. And then if you think, well, don't really like where it's bigger there than the rest of it. The beauty of clay is you can take it off again. So if you make a mistake, it's really easy to correct. So we'll try again. I have a sausagey shape. Put it on. I've not put any more slip on because the clay is quite wet. I'm just going to press that down. And I'm going to turn the star and ease the other way this time because I think it works better that way. And stamp some there. It creates quite a nice little pattern. And obviously, the more you layer it up, the more like an eyebrow it will look. Depends kind of what you're after, really. And then I can add a little bit of the fruit shooter curve at the bottom there, the fruit shoot lid, and you're starting to get an eye. Okay, so you've created your basic face. You've got your eyes, your lips, your nose, you've got eyebrows. This is when we're going to add some hair. So if you put your oval face to one side, take some spare clay that you've rolled out earlier. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to roll it a little bit thinner. And sort of fit it against your character that's starting to emerge. So mine's going to have short hair going off at an angle like that. So I quite like the way it flicks out there. Now you can shape it using a knife. I quite like the shape it is already to be honest. But you can make it a bit neater at the edges or you don't actually have to use a knife. You can rip the clay to shape. 
So I quite like it being slightly more natural looking. So let's take that piece of hair and put it against my character like that. So I'm going to thin it off here. So basically this bit is about rolling out your clay and cutting it into the shape of a hairdo. So if you're doing yourself, you could give yourself an outrageous hairdo that you've perhaps always wanted. So I'm kind of happy with that really. Maybe a little bit more of a shape there. Maybe a little bit more of a shape there. Quite like it flicking up. So the clay is drying out and it is a little bit fragile, so just be careful how you handle it. So I like that shape, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some textures so it's again a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to put it down on the mat and move my clay head out of the way. And I'm going to go back to my trusty felt tip lids. So I'm going to use this bit here. So I'm going to create a patterned hairdo for my character. So you see the felt tip lid gives quite a nice texture there. So that will go just slightly over the face. So it's a bit sticky up at the top of the nose. So what I'm going to do is at an angle, I'm going to slice the nose, a bit of plastic surgery. And then just around the edge of the face, the top of the face, Let's smooth the nose as well. I'm going to add some slip, which is the glue is basically clay and water. Take the hair and put a ton of slip up on the back of that, particularly the bit that we want to join. Move all the rest of the stuff out of the way. And then I'm going to place that on there. And then I'm just going to play around with the clay, pushing it into position. You might want to give it a little bit of a shape there so it doesn't sit flat. It's a little bit more characterful. Okay, so you've got your hairdo like that, and again, you can carry on squeezing, squashing, making it stick out, making it sit a bit more flat. Just be careful with your clay because it will be quite thin and fragile. And then on the back, what you're going to do is you're going to take your lollipop stick and you're going to do the dragging clay thing. So you're going to drag your clay. Now you might find that this has gone quite dry. So in that case, you'll need a little tiny bit of the clay, tiny little sausage, and just put it into the join there. And then this will help or clay piece to stick together. So if you do that all the way around where the hair joins the head on the back, and that will stop it dropping to pieces. And you do the same if you were using the flour and salt and water mixture as well, or any of the things that I've suggested actually, because it just helps your join to be stronger. So you do that all the way around. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some ears. So, flat bit of spare clay. I'm going to cut a wide oval shape like that, or like an egg shape, chop it in half and they're going to be my ears. Now you might think they're quite big so if you do you can chop a bit of the clay off or you might want to make them even bigger. It's up to you how kind or cruel you'd want to be. So I'd position them before you decide to add the slip. Once you're happy with it, again, do the scrape, the slip and the join in with the lollipop stick. Make sure they don't drop off. And then just gently at the edges, squeeze them on as well. 
and then you might want to add further details like you might want to give a bit of a cheekbone there you'd get a little bit of clay and you sort of build it up and you sort of squash it down build it up smooth it in or you might want to add some freckles so i'm going to do that like that because in the summer i go quite freckly it's not it's not really me it's not a self-portrait but we're going to have freckles okay you might think she's looking a bit glum she's absolutely fed up of being stuck in the house but we can give her we can cheer her up a little bit give her a little smiley bit at the edge of her mouth and then she's still quite flat which is lovely but if you want this to be slightly more curved like this one here what you will do is when when you've done all the details and you're happy that everything's stuck down and you've added freckles or little smiley bits and you've made the nostrils bigger or smooth stuff down got rid of lumps and bumps you'll then get your rolling pin and with some of the clay you've got left you'll put it either side so the rolling pin doesn't roll around and you'll put your character on and just let it gently curve and i can curve it more so this one was curved more at the bottom than it was at the top which is giving it the wider face and it starts to look a bit more 3d so there we go have a go see what you come up with once it's dry so I'll just put this back down because it's quite delicate at the moment. Once it's dry, I'm lucky enough to have a kiln, which is why it's the same as a plate or a mug. But if you're using the pretend clay, you can bake it in the oven and it goes nice and hard. If it's just clay, you don't need to buy special air drying clay. You can just use normal clay, let it harden off for about a week you can get something like shoe polish and you can rub the shoe polish onto your clay face and then cover it with something like a PVA glue or a varnish and that will help to harden it off and you should have a lovely clay portrait and you'll have spent half an hour relaxing and having time to yourself. 